Hi guys, Dane here, and welcome to my July 2022 reading wrap-up. I have some books to show you to start with. These are all by Spike Milligan as well, of, of all things. So, we will start... Dane reads... Chronologically, with more Goon cartoons by Spike Milligan. So this is basically just cartoons from the Goon show. They've taken, like, the scripts of the show and turned it into these cartoons. The Goon Show was the, the radio show that Milligan used to write and star in. Um, he's also like an accomplished writer and whatnot as well himself. Um, I've never really listened to The Goon Show, so this was really my first like proper introduction to it. Funnily enough, after reading this, I found a vinyl of the Goon Show highlights in a charity shop, so I listened to that as well. But yeah, I did enjoy this, like 3.5 out of 5. The only thing I would say is that I feel as though basically because right because it was written to be a radio show it works better as a radio show than as a cartoon the cartoon works fine but i don't know if it necessarily adds anything the whole thing is so surreal anyway and actually a lot of the humor is from like the sound effects and stuff but yeah it was pretty well done i did enjoy it i gave it a 3.5 out of 5. greetings internet people i have some more books to talk to you about so I finished reading The Goon Show Scripts by Spike Milligan. This was another 3.5 out of 5. All of these have just been 3.5 out of 5. I mean, they're good. They're just not great. Um, it would probably help if I was a bigger Spike Milligan fan, or a bigger Goon Show fan in particular. I do like his sense of humour and his style of writing, though. For some reason, the camera's also focusing on my hand. That's not my face. Oh, and it's gone. It stopped completely. Anyway, um, yeah, this is some scripts from the earlier episodes of The Goon Show. I mean, all of these were early. These were all, like, 1950-odd. Um, and, yeah, they were just quite enjoyable. Um, I also read The Book of the Goons, again, by Spike Milligan. And also more Goon Show scripts. So, again, these are all 3.5 out of 5, and mostly these are just scripts from Goon Show episodes. Um, they're all funny and they're very like surrealistic, very influenced by almost like uh, Lewis Carroll and things like that. Um, they are kind of problematic at times because there are a lot of like basically racist and homophobic tropes. Um, I did say in my vlog, like Spike Milligan who wrote these, I mean he was born in 1918. Um, and he also served in the British Army in the Second World War, so I think he picked up a lot of this stuff in the Army as well. Um, but obviously it was a less woke time. Um, so if you can get past that and enjoy the japery, they are still enjoyable. But yes, they would. you wouldn't give these to somebody young, I don't think. Whereas back in the day, you'd have like 11 year olds would be sitting listening to the Goon Show with their grandma, you know. So yeah, that is those. Um, I also read The Devils of Loudon. I think that's how you pronounce it, by Aldous Huxley. Huxley being the guy who wrote The Doors to Percept The Doors of Perception and Heaven and Hell, which is where he took a load of mescaline basically and just wrote about him being drugged up. Um, this is non-fiction about so it's set in Loudon, France in August 1634, where this guy was burned at the stake for witchcraft. Um, they thought that he'd been uh, that these nuns had been possessed by the devil, all of this stuff. So it sounds like it should be really interesting, but it is in fact very dull. So I gave this a two out of five. Um, and it's also just like a tiny print. So I read this as a bedtime book, slowly but surely. Um, some bits of it were interesting. I couldn't tell you a single thing that stuck with me from this, though. Um, I mean, it was nice to try and read the French poetry, so there is that. But yeah, I mean, yeah. So that's that. And then I read Dead If You Don't by Peter James. So this is a Roy Grace book, um, which is like his detective. In this one, there is like a kidnapping plot. Um, I will say there was a part in this where it just went off on a... Well, it, it kind of spends the first 200 pages setting up one thing, and then it suddenly does this little twist to go in a slightly different direction. And I felt as though the misdirection was overdone, and he, he could have done a bit less of it, um, and still told the story. So, you know, there is that. But I still enjoyed it. I gave it a 4 out of 5. Peter James has got a really good writing style, and um, also... He does a lot of research, so when he does like police procedural stuff, he really knows what he's talking about. He consults with the police and all of this stuff. Um, so it's really interesting from that point of view. And I, I think I even said in my review, it contrasts with my approach to um, writing like cozy mysteries and stuff. And I do those specifically because I don't want to have to do all of this research. But Grace is like fascinated by it all. I think he even has a charity for ex-cops and all of this stuff. Grace? I met Peter James. He's also a very cool guy. He's on YouTube and he has an Instagram. And he has a copy of Driven as well. Shout out to Peter James. So yeah, four out of five for that. And I've got a few more Peter James on my to-be-red pile coming up soon. 
Hello wrap up people, I have two books uh, to talk to you about today. The first is Méfier Vous des Abeilles by R.L. Stein. This is from Serge Cher de Pou. Uh, this is Goosebumps in French. Uh, and this book is Why I'm Afraid of Bees in the English title. Um, I have read it once before and actually quite recently and just thought it was okay. And the same is true in French. It was actually harder to read than the first Harry Potter book because it does some weird things with tenses and I didn't know what they were talking about a lot of the time. Um, but it was good to, you know, improve my vocabulary and all of that stuff and just to get me used to reading more French. So I gave it a 3.5 out of 5. And then I read Asking for Trouble by Tori Wag. So this is a poetry collection. I'm going to read you one to give you a feel for it. I met Tori at um, Far Out Festival where um, she gave a reading. My band was playing and then we were both selling books right next to each other. So we sort of swapped books with one another. And I'm hopefully going to chat to her for my radio show as well. I gave this a four, uh, 3.5 out of 5. Sorry, did enjoy it. This is Frozen Shoulder. Tonight I hit a wall of despondency. Energy trickled from my feet. My rigid neck held in a crick for a week, finally locked itself in place and whispered enough. I have tried with gentle persuasion, a spasm, a pull, a soft consistent ache to remind you to pause, to breathe, to stretch. I bellowed unexpectedly in the middle of the night. I shook you awake with a steering stab across your shoulder blade. You gasped, clenched teeth and rearranged the pillows. I made your eyes water in pain, stopped you from pulling on a jumper, reaching for the seatbelt, turning to check for traffic, and still you persisted. One more hour at the desk, another email, a quick message, an early start, a late night at the screen. You would not listen, you will not learn. So the lesson becomes a message. You cannot outrun your own body, you are not invincible. This life will kill you if you don't make changes, and tomorrow I will make you rest. I will get your attention the only way I know how. There will be great pain and I shall not blink, I shall not let up, because we both stare that pig-headed stubbornness that gets us into this mess. Don't let it get too late to change. So yeah, I also like the fact that it's free verse, because I do like some free verse poetry. Okay, I want to wrap up quickly Grandpa in Oz by Ruth Plumley Thompson. So this is the latest Oz book that I've read as part of the Wizard of Oz series. I thought it was okay, but it wasn't great. Um, I've been reading these kind of as a buddy read with Joel Swagman. I don't even know if he's going to continue reading up to this point. And um, I guess the problem with this was that I just didn't find it as funny as the others. It wasn't as like jam packed with gags and stuff like that. It did actually have a, a more like linear and realistic plot. But that, in a way, was a problem for me, because um, I don't think that's what the odd series is, is about. Uh, overall, I gave it a 3.5 out of 5 anyway. I mean, I ticked it off. Greetings, everybody. I have two books to wrap up for you, and I don't know what they are. I guess one of them was, well, I've just put French down here, so it must have been uh, Les Aventures de Pif. Le Chant, um, book number three, and I can't remember who wrote it. It's Piff the Dog. It's a, uh, you know, it's a fun little read. It's designed for kids, but obviously I'm using it to boost my vocabulary and comprehension and stuff. So I'm glad I read that. Like 3.5 out of five. I can't show it to you because I've already put it in. In fact, I think it might already be in the charity shop. It's either already been donated to the charity shop or it's in my list of stuff to donate to the charity shop. Um, and then I read. Dead at First Sight by Peter James. So this is another one of his Roy Grace crime novels and I'm sort of slowly but surely working my way through all of them. Um, it was okay. The premise of it was interesting because it's to do with like uh, online dating scams and basically people being conned out of money and stuff. But then murder and stuff comes along and starts happening because that's what happens when there are huge sums of money up for grabs, you know. Um, so yeah, it was a pretty interesting little read. Um, I don't think it was his best, but I did enjoy that online dating element just because that relate like to me reminded me of um, Netflix. No, The Tower Hill Terror. I almost used my old title, which we can't use for legal reasons. Um, so yeah, it reminded me of one of my own books. Um, but yeah, I just it was all right. It was like a three point five out of five. Okay, people, I've got a few books to wrap up for you today. The first is The Disappearance of Adele Badeau by Graham McRae Burnett. So this is like a literary fiction detective novel kind of thing set in France. Uh, it follows like a kind of an ensemble cast where, um, yeah, they're all kind of involved in this disappearance in different ways. We follow kind of a main character. Uh, it breaks a lot of rules for detective novels, but I kind of like that. Um, and yeah, overall it was really good. Um, there were like a few cliches and stuff in it, but it was just beautifully written. I gave it a four out of five. A full review will be coming soon.
Okay, then I read uh, Peter James, Absolute Proof. So this book is, uh, it's been compared to The Da Vinci Code and I can kind of see why. It's one of those novels where um, basically um, there's a lot of stuff going on. The main concept is what would happen if somebody had absolute proof of God's existence, although really it was more absolute proof of Jesus' existence. And even then it didn't necessarily mean it was Jesus. It could have just been some random dude from the time of Jesus. But I did enjoy it, it was pretty well written. Um, better written than The Da Vinci Code, less twisty and turny, but then this wasn't trying to be that, it was trying to be something else. Um, overall, it's like a week four out of five, but pretty good. Again, review coming soon, all tabbed out. All right, then I read Asterix Max Numero Nerf. So uh, this is basically, it's like a compilation book. It's got some Asterix in it, but it's also got some like Un Adventure de Benjamin et Benjamin. Uh, it's got some puzzles in it. It's almost like uh, the equivalent to like an annual or something like that. Um, and it was just great for, again, like improving my French, learning some new vocabulary. I gave it like a week four out of five and there's another one of these coming soon. And then I read Objects of Affection and Other Plays for Television by Alan Bennett. So this is, I think, what, seven or eight TV plays. The really interesting thing about these is that they're shorter than like a regular stage play because obviously they're designed just for television. Um, that made them very readable. You don't have to have seen the actual TV versions of these as well to enjoy it. And, um, you know... Yeah, I enjoyed it, and I really enjoy Bennett's writing in general. I don't have too much to say about this, but I will be doing a review of this soon as well, so keep your eyes peeled. All right, so I read Pirate Latitudes by Michael Crichton. This was a four out of five for me. This is historical fiction about pirates. Um, really well written. It was actually discovered as a complete manuscript after his death um, and published. And I, I think I said in my review of this that, like, I've seen that happen before where the books have been people have had to kind of like stitch these different disparate bits together or whatever to create a full manuscript so the the beauty about this was that it was already ready to publish uh, really well written I wasn't sure I was gonna like it because I'm not the biggest historical fiction fan but it, it's just a cracking story by itself and there's some nice little bits of gore in it as well so that's something else to think about then I read The Martian, but sorry, then I read Artemis by Andy Weir. So obviously Andy Weir wrote The Martian and um, this I think it's had a lot of bad reviews and I think the reason is is because people were expecting another Martian and that's not what this is. It's more just like hard boiled sci-fi. It's got a good story and some pretty good characterization. Um, but I can understand if you weren't a sci-fi fan but you like The Martian and then you pick this up, you'd be a bit disappointed because it's like a very different kettle of fish, I suppose. But I did enjoy it. I gave it like a reasonably strong 3.5 out of 5, and I will definitely be reading more Andy Weir in the future. Um, yeah, you can tell the guy's inspired by Isaac Asimov as well. And then I read Plays 2 by Alan Bennett. So this contains Kafka's Dick, which was a 4.5 out of 5, The Insurance Man, 4 out of 5, The Old Country, An Englishman Abroad, and A Question of Attribution, each of which were 3.5 out of 5. I gave the thing as a whole a 4 out of 5. Really great plays, so the first two are about Franz Kafka, so I particularly enjoyed them because I've read some Kafka and you can see a lot of like nods and allusions to his work. Um, but yeah, Alan Bennett is just a master playwright, you know, and I would love to go and see one of his plays performed one day, especially Kafka's Dick, because there's some bits in that where it breaks the fourth wall, um, which I hate that when it's done badly, but it wasn't done badly here, so yes, did enjoy. So there we have it, those are all of the books that I read in the month of July 2022. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and if so, what you thought of them. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.